Hello, my friends. It's Pat Sloan here. We're starting out first with this majestic, look at this, amaryllis. So I had gotten one and it was okay. Actually, the flowers weren't that great. It only had two flowers. It didn't have a second stalk, which I thought it was going to have. So I was like, okay, well, they bloomed. They're done. So I went to the grocery store and I found this magnificent. There are six blooms on each stalk and the second stalk is just opening. Ah, oh, so it's gorgeous. So I had to show that off because, you know, it's wonderful. <laughs> so we have our Christmas quote for today. I am going to show you again my wreath quilt. So this is one that I've done in a couple of different seasons. So it's kind of fun. It's easy. Uh, it's a free pattern over at my website. And this is one that I added buttons to. So you can see on the green part. So you have got buttons all around. And I did have a hanging sleeve on here because I hung it on my door a couple of times until I got that other wreath quilt done for Christmas time. So, and I love the little vintagey Santas on here. So the other thing for today, uh, before we do our regular, a couple things before we do our regular uh, sweater weather for Tuesday, uh, it is a game board day. Game boards. Oh, have you made a quilt with game boards on it or a game board theme? You may have done, um, well, so, uh, what is it, Sudoku? That's not a game board, but if you have another game board, like a Monopoly game, uh, anything fun like that, the, today's your day to share it. If you have done my Parcheesi board from my Table Topper book, there it is. I love doing this one. It was uh, inspired, of course, by the, by the game board. And the border is so fun, the corners. These are my favorite part, I think, and the colors. Yeah, so it's nice and fun and cheerful, like the, the playing parts uh, for the game boards. I also did another game quilt, which was commissioned. I rarely do commission pieces. If you're not familiar with the word commissioned, it means somebody asked me to design something specifically, make it, and they purchased it from me. So it is not a pattern, um, but I had the uh, people at Orphil asked me to design a backgammon board quilt because for one of their employees as a special gift because they collect backgammon boards and so here is a picture of what I designed and it's um, yeah it's not there's no pattern so just enjoy it for the quilt and is now in a private collection uh, from a gentleman with a gentleman in Italy uh, so that was very fun. It was very fun to be asked to do that. I got to do it all with applique. Uh, so it was, it was really cool to do. And we did ha we've had a lot of Oh My Stars Christmas table runners in the community group, quote along with Pat Sloan at Facebook. It is so much fun to see all your variations. I gathered a few now uh, to show you. So here's just a small sampling of Oh My Stars. So Bonnie did her Oh My Stars uh, with the same fabric. She did a few other pieces. So she's got these three coordinated pieces, which are the same thing, same fabrics I did in my Trim the Tree quilt. I showed you what, like Friday or Saturday uh, for my quilt of the, uh, of the day. Okay, Candy did hers with this beautiful stripe. Look at that. It looks uh, gorgeous. She's got it all along the border and I love it. Carrie's is so cute. I actually did a quilt, I think, years ago with this fabric line um, that was in one of my books. And look at the f fabulous border with the stars. Colleen did a square version because that's what works for her table. And it's so warm and cozy. Love that. I think it's black. I think it's a black snowflake fabric. Darlene's is got the same um, fabric that I have, the Hustle Bustle. Super cute. She added some additional stars. I think it's actually might be longer. Um, Dawn's is in a red border. I love that swirl. Look at that swirl. And then I have that. Is that the same holly I have? No, it's a little different. Mine has text on it. You see the cardinal? See the one with the cardinal? And, and a snowman? Super cute. And here's another one from Dawn. She actually did three. <laughs> so this one has a stripe in the border, which is incredible. The angled stripe with uh, red and green. Oh, it's so cool. And her third one with a green border. And there again, she's got some cardinal fabric, snowman fabric. It is wonderful. 
Denise's has a green border and also some super happy uh, ho 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 fabric. I see the words in there. Elaine's is beautiful with daisies and the white stars just pop. They look really good. Here's Gail's. Look at look at the um the fabric for the border. Isn't that awesome? With the what are they called? Ornaments. There, that's the word. The ornament fabric. <laughs> Okay, I had to toss this one in here. This is from Helen. She did my grand's gingerbread. So darling. Gingerbread in the border, too. Just stop. It's so cute. Okay, here's Catherine's. Uh, and I love this green fabric. And she did the wave stitch on the diagonal. Do you see that? Look how wonderful that looks. And the stripe binding. Gotta love a stripe binding. Lori's is beautiful, looks like snow, the gray snowflake fabric, and then the white um, and red accent pieces, also lovely, plus her uh, vase there on, on top. It's all perfect, all goes together. Nellie's is got beautiful green fabric. It's all quilted. You can see the holly quilting in it. Isn't that cute? Oh, there's jingle bells too, holly and jingle bells. Olivia's is uh, is gorgeous. I just want to show you. Look what she did. She used a lot of the same fabric, so it gives a totally different effect. And then she has great line quilting on it around on the border part. Looks so good, Olivia. Pamela's is also got that sort of frosty with the blue. It's a wintry feel. That is so pretty. And she did three different color stars. So there you can see one done that way. Is this Paul? I don't know if I put Paul or Paula. So sorry if whichever one it was. I, I'm not sure. My my note here isn't that good. Uh, but it looks so nice with the black accent border on it. Wonderful. And we've got one more from Virginia. And this is a longer, is that a longer one? No, I guess not. It's just the way it's hanging. I thought it was longer. But it has got bumblebees and uh, daisies in a bee fabric with bright, happy yellow stars. These are all so fabulous. And there's even more. Go to my website. Quote, um, go to my Facebook group. Quote along with Pat Sloan and you can see them. So take a look. Go over to the group and take a look because that's really where you're going to see all of the good stuff. <laughs> you're going to see so many variations. They're so inspiring. A lot of people have longer tables, so they've just added stars and done longer versions. All of that is just really cool. And it's and I've seen some where they didn't really add the border or not much. You know, the stars go out there, so you have to add that part. But maybe they stopped at the stars, whatever it was. But they're like long skinny ones for like down the t table, the long table. So cool. Okay, another thing that I have in the link below to an article. Our um, ambassador, Kathy, uh, found a really interesting article about picking colors for your temperature quilt. Because if you're going to do a temperature quilt, uh, you don't have to do primary colors, uh, like rainbow colors. You can do all kinds of colors. You just need to have them vary so that you can group the you know, 15 categories of temperatures or whatever you decide on. And then there's a color for each of those temperatures. And so this article is really good. It is in the link box under the video here. Uh, so you can go check that out. Do you do this? The boppin ran out. So I thought, okay, I'm just trying to get this, this sewn. Of course it ran out while I'm sewing, but <laughs> I knew it was going to run out because it told me very nicely Solaris. Uh, but I'm trying to get one more unit up on the wall so I can talk about it for the video. And the bobbin ran out. And then I thought, well, why don't I just do some more bobbins while I'm in here? And I thought, well, maybe I'll just try to run the whole thread off because it's close to being done. And then I have a bunch of the bobbins. So, do you do this? It's like a cascading effect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it is sweater weather day and i have a massive fail on my part just massive i mean just like like one of those where you're like ah uh, how did i forget about that so what the deal is yeah it's big it's a big problem <laughs> a big problem the other night i decided instead of doing the plan i thought i was going to do i just really wanted all the corners on these and so i got them done i just finished trimming them all as a matter of fact last night <laughs> she got the last ones trimmed and i'm like good they're trimmed they're good i'm ready so today i went to put them up 
and I have this segment that are sewn um, three across, two down. Let me just grab one with the darling bears and pink flamingos. Uh, so this is you know, three across, two down. And then I started looking at the pattern to get you know my bearings on because I know I had to be careful about how I'm doing the rest of these so that I have uh, what I need on the side because I can't do another set of three. I need to have two more per row. And my original thought was like I would intersperse them and all that and then I realized no I can't do any of that. I can't do any of that because I forgot <clears throat> that the side of the quilt is not squares. You know, this is a rectangle, right? <clears throat> well, the side of the quilt is, you know, rectangles, but I was counting, um, let me see, did I do that right? Or am I like crazy? Yeah, so, so, so there's, okay. So I get myself confused every time I start looking at this now because I keep thinking, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm wrong. <laughs> so the row here is being uh, three across. I still need two more with all four sides. Then what I forgot was that the sides of this, the, the rectangles, because I was thinking they were squares all the way around the outside. So I just... <sighs> So there's they're, they're rectangles and these rectangles need to only have squares on two sides, just two sides. So I'm sure that I have extra in here that won't be used because this is like a lot in my hand to be doing. I still have to do three rows of rectangles up above. I still have to do three rows. And so uh, with, with all four, corners done. So I'm going to pull all the ones to do those three rows. And then I am going to have to cut rectangles and sew squares on just two sides for the left and the right border. The squares across the top and the bottom I'm fine because I'm just dealing with rectangles. I haven't dealt with those squares yet. So I'm not quite as far as I had hoped, but that's okay. That's uh, yeah. I just somehow that's what happens you get it in your head and I, I didn't set aside or make myself a big note about those side ones oh okay so I'll use up a few more I'll have some extras I'll probably sew them together and put them in the part center which <laughs> I have to have one month next year maybe I just sew part center quilts take those quilts these quilts here that are bags of parts like Here's a bags of, you know, I've got a bag of quilt parts and just sew quilts from them because uh, I have the, ba the, the basket's full. The basket is full. I don't, here, look, it is full. I haven't even put those away because I just laid them on top because I didn't feel like, you know, this basket is full, full, full. So that is, that is an issue. That is a big issue. There they are. So I've got them kind of grouped by colors, except of course this bunch in my hand, which is not grouped at all. So I have like five bags, six, no, there's five in there that I can see. I think there might be one squished in between, plus that one I took out here. So there's six or seven bags. The six or seven quilts, if not more, <laughs> from the part center. Oi, 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 that is, that is a pain because uh, I have a lot here. I need to start doing one of those. I have a lot of things I want to do. <laughs> okay, I'm rambling. Let's, uh, let's do a couple Q and A's because that'll just wrap up today. We will have a short day today. <sighs> okay, first Q and A <laughs> is, so I have a little Q and A here. Suzanne asked if I would show again how I do my scarf. So I have to take the mic off for that. I will talk loud while I have it on the table. All right, I use a scarf that is, you know, one length. And how I normally do it is wrap it so that there's a loop around and you've got two tails hanging down. So you've got a loop, right? Two tails and the tails, I make them, you know, try to make them about even. And then I put them inside the loop from the top to the bottom. So from top to bottom, and there we go. You can 
do it in the middle, you can sort of fluff it, you can have these uh, even if you like. Another way that I'll wear it sometimes is to make it uh, in two, so there's a loop here, and then I take both pieces around my neck, and here's this loop, take the ends through the loop, and voila, you have the scarf. And this one is also really nice. Got the mic back up here, and we're in business. Uh <laughs> okay, the second Q&A, there's three of them. The second one is from Adeline, and she wanted to know where I buy the curved needles. I've talked about using hand needles that are slightly bent, and you don't buy them. You bend them yourself. So here is my um, little needle holder that I like, and I will try to show you my needle. It's got, th it's got the one with thread or one not with thread. I had to get it out. I need to put it on something that I think you can see the curve. So I have it here on the fabric. Can you see that it's curved? It's, it's got a, a very slight curve here. Here's the point of the needle. So this very slight curve, I do by just holding the needle in my hand and bending it <clears throat> just a little bit, not a lot, just a tiny little bit to put a little bend in that. Uh, you will find that it happens naturally when you're sewing a lot with a hand needle. And some people, when it starts to get this little curve, they don't like it. They like that nice straight needle, like a firm straight needle. So they will swap these out then for a new needle. For me, I like to just, I don't want to wait. So I start them out whenever I can. And they have to be like the more hand sewing needles, not like tapestry needles or the cross stitch needles. Those are too thick. They won't do this. Okay, and the last, uh, the last q and I have is from Alexandria, who wanted to know, uh, if you're just starting out, how do you build a stash? Oh, oh my friend, <laughs> we have thoughts for you. Now, actually, I would like everybody to leave comments. Please leave comments here at YouTube, uh, because that is something that I think a lot of new people worry about. I can maybe remember that. It's been a long time since I was brand new. Uh, when I sewed clothing, I really didn't want leftovers. I really, I didn't. I had no use for a piece that was, you know, I made a skirt and I had this little extra piece. I wasn't doing patchwork clothing or anything like that. It wasn't, it wasn't something I kept. Um, but in uh, quilting, all those things, plus more, plus loads of beautiful fabrics are out there that we can use in little parts. So we can have a little bit of this, a little bit of that in a quilt. Um, so what I would like you to do is first, don't rush yourself. Don't barrel into it and just buy all kinds of stuff because your taste will change as you start making quilts. You'll develop knowing what you like and you don't care for when you're making a quilt, what color combinations you gravitate towards. And if you just start buying all kinds of stuff it doesn't go together you eventually might be a person who likes to buy collections and then add a little bit to them um, which is kind of what I'm doing with scrappiness is happiness to show you that process you can take a collection and add to it if you're that kind of a person then you don't need a lot of extra stuff you need to have the collection first so you know what to add to it um, there but if you're someone who's been gravitating to like the ultra scrappy quilts like the ones that seem to have you know like plaid fabric and disney fabric and flower fabric and you know all kinds of uh, other things in them then you could be collecting a lot of different types and styles and they'll eventually work for you because you gravitate towards making that type of thing so don't rush i think that's my biggest thing is don't rush and you will be fine <laughs> There's lots of fabric out there and it will, oh, there will always be lots of fabric to choose from. Uh, here's the quilt again for today, my Christmas quilt for today. Only a few more days of videos for the Christmas quilts. I'll do a video through Friday. Uh, so that means three more Christmas quilts I'll be sharing uh, on my videos. <laughs> Very excited about that. And I'm gonna just bite the bullet and go ahead and cut those sides and the squares to do them. Ugh, yeah, I just can't believe I did that. Oh well, such is life. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.